the age of 16 babar ali is the world's youngest headmaster anybody can achieve if you are willing to achieve babar ali and babar ali students they never had much of anything what we are having today there is one character there is one person who works harder without any much of expectation mother hello hi namaste and welcome to vidyashram temple of excellence i am nanda kishore faculty of english in vidyashram mysore in my previous session i had discussed about the chapter or manushan written by waikum mohammad bashir in today's session i will be discussing about the chapter babar ali written by samarpita mukherjee sharma so first let us see about the author this is none other than samarpita mukherjee sharma and she was associate creative editor of youth leader india the india chapter of youth leader magazine she is a member of the dynamic action oriented online magazine network focusing on ground breaking positive change initiatives portraits tools and more let us see about babar ali who is babar ali as you can see he is babar ali can you just believe this person had become the headmaster of a school at the age of 16 years old yes you need to believe that he babar ali had become the headmaster at the age of 16 years old just 16 years old and who are these people now as you can see these people are the young achievers this person is angad daryani creator of first 3d printers in india and at the age of 7 or 8 years old he had created his own robot these two young kids anand gangadharan and mohak balla creators of walkie mobi chargers as you can see these two kids are holding a shoe and using the shoe they had prepared a walkie or mobile charger they name it as walkie mobi charger and most importantly this walkie mobi charger used to charge the cell phones 42% just in half an hour which is almost 22 to 23% more comparatively than regular chargers and if you can see this young kid here he is kautilya pandit a young genius who is just 10 years old and he is known as google boy and uh, his iq level is 130 points at the age of 10 years usually kids will have 100 to 110 or 120 at max and he has 130 points and that is not a less number of points i'm talking about because each and every points of iq level intelligent quotient level makes a lot of difference and this girl young woman is an author Melita Tessi author of the book Battle of Spheres at the age of 16 years old and Google gives the information about this girl saying at the age of 16 years old when kids are trying to understand what is simile and metaphor this young lady here has composed has written her own book so these are the young achievers let me just ask ourselves let me just ask you let me just question myself too how many of us were young achievers how many of us thought of giving something to this world at the age of 15 16 17 years old we were only bothered about ourselves we just wept and complained and blamed at our parents that they didn't buy this they didn't buy this they didn't buy that how many of us thought of creating something for ourselves how many of us thought of giving something to this society how many of us thought of creating something and helping others here is one such example babar ali this person at the age of 16 years old educated 800 odd students and uh, this icon is just the best example in today's society 
at the age of 16 years old without having anybody's much of a support I would say though he had a bit of support from his family members and others without having any great support from his parents and the society without blaming the society for not giving him what he wanted he went on educating 800 odd students and they were recognized by other institutions and they were taken to their colleges let's talk about Babar Ali now so who is Babar Ali here Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma, she is just introducing this icon to the readers and she is setting an example to the world that anybody can achieve if you are willing to achieve and if you are not willing to do something for yourself and to the society, no matter how old you grow, you cannot achieve anything. With this icon, let us see how well a person can achieve and succeed in his own life. Babar Ali must be the youngest headmaster in the world. She writes, Babar Ali must be the youngest headmaster in the world, not just in our country. He is just the best example in the entire world. As he is only 16. Think about this age. What did you think of? You might be just 15 or 16 or 17 years old when you are learning this chapter or when you are watching this YouTube channel or when you are watching this clip. How many of you could think of educating others? How many of you could think of doing something for yourself and doing something for the country? I would say very handful, very less, very less comparatively, all the, all the percentage put together, it is very less. He is a teenager who is in charge of teaching hundreds of students in his family's backyard. He didn't have any accommodation, any building, any structure, any school, he didn't own any infrastructure. And he says, where he runs his class for poor, for poor children from his village and where did he run his school? In the backyard. In the backyard. The story of this young man from Murshidabad, one more question, in West Bengal is a remarkable tale of desire to learn amid the direst poverty, not just poverty, direst intensity, direst poverty. Our Bangladesh based wild volunteer Tanvir would like to introduce you to this extraordinary change maker. Isn't he the extraordinary change maker? Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma is trying to introduce his character in such a way to the readers that we would just stop reading for a second and we should start thinking and we should make up our mind to achieve something in our life at least from henceforth, at least from now on. What is he? Now we know who is Babar Ali, at the age of 16 years old, he has become the headmaster and the author introduced him saying that he had become the headmaster of a school at the age of 16 years old. Now what is he? Did he just take up the profession of teaching and just became the headmaster eventually? Now let us see what he was. Babar Ali wakes up every morning at 7, at 7 a.m and starts his day by doing some household chores. How many of you help your parents in the kitchen? How many of you help your father while cleaning up the house or maybe just arranging his clothes or maybe just helping him to get ready for him for the office? You expect your parents to run around you, run behind you and to get you ready and to send you to the college. But here at the age of 14 or 15 years old, he gets up at 7 a.m. and he is doing a lot of household chores. Then he takes an auto rickshaw first and later walks 5 kilometers. How many kilometers? 5 kilometers. He had to walk 5 kilometers to the Kosim Bazar Raj Govinda Sundari Vidya Pete. This is where he, he studies. This is where he is studying, not teaching. He is studying and he walks 5 kilometers to the institution Kosim Bazar Rajagovinda Sundari Vidyapit. One more question. Where is a class 12, uh, class 12 student? Just class 12 student is trying to become the headmaster of his own institution has got no more to speak about. The achievement itself is speaking. Babar is the thin and gangly boy. Gangly boy, not the gangly person what you think of. Gangly boy is nothing but the way he is dressed and the way he walks as if he is not interested in anything. But 
in his mind there is a lot of process going on he is thinking of getting education first and just sacrificing or just donating the same education to other people that is called achievement who sits in the middle of the front row studious smart and austere in his blue and white uniform barber is a model student he is also the first member of his family to get a proper education he is the very first person in his entire family to get proper education in school he is an ideal student but it is what he does after his school hours that introduces the entire world introduces it is like extraordinary thing that what he does after the school hours the moment you go back to your houses you will just take out your bags swing it and just throw it away and dress get dressed or just go and collapse on the bed as if you are so exhausted that you cannot even open your eyes and think about doing something later you just act as if you have just won the world war 3 and you are lying there on the bed very relaxed and few people have this tendency that was 10 years before maybe now the moment you walk you will take up the remote turn on the television or you will hold your tab or your cell phones or your electronic gadgets and you spend hours together in front of it doing what just watching it then learning what learning nothing out of it but bavarali what will he do after he finishes his regular school when every other teenager goes running off to the playground and gets busy with football cricket and other sports barber makes his way to an afternoon school where he is the headmaster of a school of 800 students samar pita mukherji sharma writes when everybody is thinking about playing football cricket or other sports at least if you are into this i would really appreciate it at least you will have your physical fitness as the proverb goes sound mind in a sound body if you have a very good physical fitness you will have a strong mental power maybe your mentality will be proper but what do you do you sit in front of the electronic gadgets and waste your precious hours and what babarali is doing here as soon as he finishes his class he just goes back to his backyard and the afternoon school where is the headmaster not just a helping hand he is the headmaster of how many students 800 students not just one or two or tens it is about 800 students can you educate one single child at the age of 16 years old i will challenge you if you have any siblings or your relative members or any of the small kids in your home who is not more than 7 or 8 years old try to teach them a subject try to convince them try to reach them try to make them understand what you are teaching and if you succeed then you are capable of educating few kids try doing it this is a task welcome to babarali school it is a dilapidated concrete structure covered in half tone posters inside in a tiny dank room behind a desk sits someone even the queen of england knows by name and you should too samarpita mukherjee sharma is trying to appeal each and every reader this person babarali who sits just behind the tiny desk is known by even the queen of england babarali is so famous obviously any president or any powerful person in the world it could be the world leaders powerful leaders would know babarali and most importantly even the queen of england would know by his name she would know who is babarali because at the age of 16 years old nobody would have become the headmaster of their own institution and she says you should too even you should know about him behind the office is a gate that opens to barber's home behind the office is a gate there is a gate behind the office maybe just behind you yeah? and there is a gate behind the office and it leads to babar ali's home this is where rows of poor underprivileged kids sit under the open blue sky and learn what most children in the modern world 
pay hundreds of dollars for for free for is repeated twice this for is talking about how hundreds of dollars are spent for education in today's time and baba students are learning it for free no fee at all you need not pay even a single penny to get educated in babar ali school this is where 800 kids who are deprived from their basic right for education walk miles to learn they might be young kids here they might be young kids and they walk miles they walk kilometers for what not to get any penny or not to earn money in order to get basic education walk miles to learn free of cost the basics and fundamentals of life samarpita mukherji sharma is trying to appeal request and she is giving an opportunity to the readers to think of how many kilometers would you walk to your schools today or to your colleges or to the institutions you are studying how many would prefer bicycling and and coming to college people and students and kids in babarali school they used to walk 5 kilometers maybe more just to acquire knowledge just to get something out of a person who has been educated now who is being educated who is getting education from somebody else babarali school so let's take a minute over here and think while we whine about our allowances this is very important now while writing about this person babar ali now samarpita mukherji sharma she is trying to reach the readers and she is also telling about herself and she says let us take for a minute just take a minute and think about ourselves while writing about this icon babar ali samarpita mukherji sharma is taking a chance taking a minute and she is trying to introspect herself whether she did her work without complaining for the wages she is getting or for the salary she is taking are we and she is not just analyzing herself she is not just self assessing herself she is giving an opportunity to the readers it could be the student could be the teacher it could be any reader she is giving them an opportunity to self assess themselves how many of us do work without expecting much i would say there is one character there is one person who works harder without any much of expectation mother apart from mother there is no person in the entire world who would not work up to the mark who would not work much if the salary is low if the allowance is low it is mother herself and samarpita mukherjee sharma says without thinking of much returns without having you know like it is self selfless soul service before self if i say this quote service you do service before self thinking about ourselves forget about ourselves you have to do something for others service before self and how many of us would do it how many of us were content how many of us were happy for what we have right now if we have something we crave for something more we ask for something more but babar ali he did not have anything much he just began he just thought of doing something extraordinary that is the reason why samarpita mukherjee sharma asks the reader so let's take a minute over here and think while we whine while we blame we always do this we always do that about our allowances and fuss the problems the mess first about staying out late if any of your you know the companies who will ask you to stay just for a couple of hours more to help the company grow you would say i am not paid for that i will not be doing this i don't like to stay here my working hours is from 10 to 6 my time is done my session is done i'm going to walk out and this average boy from a small village is actually helping to make this world a better place isn't he he is today all around the world where millions of children are being deprived from literacy because their families cannot bear the expenses this one school boy from india be proud being an indian most of the kids i have seen uh, 
we are so ashamed when we go to abroad country we are so ashamed to tell that we are indians be proud you may not have experience you may not know anything much of, about india read history think about the personalities who have contributed lot to the world don't think of becoming something extraordinary even if you are just educating 10 students it could be your neighbors it could be anybody even it could be the kids who are play, playing in the streets the gunny workers the laborers the, the day laborers if you are educating their kids teach them do you know the joy of educating others do you know how much pleasure you get when you teach and educate the knowledge with what you possess to the other kids it gives you immense pleasure try doing it and Barbara Ali is doing it without much of expectation this one schoolboy from India as I told be proud of being an Indian India is trying to change that and so at the age of 16 Barbara Ali is the world's youngest headmaster thumbs up Barbara Ali the fortunate soul why is he fortunate Barbara happens to be one of the fortunate souls in his village in the Bapta neighborhood, you need to be very careful with the names and the places and the year and with the numbers as well. Bapta neighborhood of Gangapur village in West Bengal's Murshidabad, Babra Ali lives with his three siblings and his parents in a thatched house, which is the size of an average city kitchen. Can you just think about this? His house was not bigger than average city kitchen average city kitchen would be not more than 15 by 15 average i would say less than that 10 by 10 maybe 8 by 10 i would say 8 by 10 square foot that's all that's all and uh, within this place he lived with his parents and along with three siblings yet she writes yet ironically he is still among the privileged ones in his village because unlike most children there he went to school and got formal education he was better off also in being the son of Nasiruddin Sheikh Nasiruddin Sheikh is Babar Ali's father he is very important you need to know why he is important because he has supported his son's venture question yourself think about your parents if you want to come up with something if you want to invent something if you want to perform something and if you want to just do something for the society or it could be even if you want to help the poor or the needy people how many of your parents were very supportive for your ventures or for the things that you wanted to invent if your parents are supporting you then you are literally blessed if they are not you are alive it's because of your parents don't blame them Babar Ali had nobody to help him out he didn't keep blaming his parents the society for not having anything he is just living in a city I know average city kitchen the size of average city kitchen he didn't keep blaming he just went on doing what he wanted to do and as I told you if you have parents like them you are blessed if you are not you are alive it's because of your parents be happy thank your parents and try to achieve something maybe if not today your parents would realize how much you are struggling to invent or to help people maybe one fine day they would realize that they have a blessed son or, or a daughter and they would help out Nasiruddin Sheikh Nasiruddin is a Jude seller he is just an ordinary Jude seller and a dropout he didn't have any prior education and remember just because you visit the schools and colleges and institutions and get your master degree that doesn't mean you are educated education is life itself each and every step each and every process that occurs in your life is education itself just because you own a certificate that doesn't mean you are well educated you are not well behaved in this chapter Babar Ali Nasruddin Sheikh Nasruddin is just a dropout from his school who believes that education is man's true religion one more question 
Nasruddin believed. Who believed? Nasruddin. Who is Nasruddin Sheikh here? Babar Ali's father. Who was he? A Jude seller. What was he? A dropout from the school. Who believed that education is man's true religion? And who initially supported his son's venture with his own income? Coming from a privileged family, Babar realized he must do something for the other children in his village. As I keep questioning you, how many of us think of educating others? How many of us think of giving something with what we possess? If we have 10 rupees in our pocket, how many of us think of giving 1 rupee to the needy people? I am not asking you to go on giving money to the beggars. There are people who just come and sit and beg and don't forget in India there are multi-millionaire beggars. I am not lying. I am not exaggerating. There are people, there are beggars who beg on the streets in metropolitan cities and do you know their income? Their income will be more than 50 lakhs, 5-0, more than 1 crore rupees. That is a beggar. It is on news. Kindly go to the YouTube or the Google and surf and you can see the information that there are richest beggars in India, in the world as well, who knows. And they own a Lamborghini, Bugatti. Possibilities are high. There is one beggar, there was maybe, and he owned a, a, a posh car. It could be Ferrari if I remember it properly. It is Ferrari. Can you think about it? From where did he get his money? It is out of the money what we have given him. You are thinking about with one rupee what would he buy? This is the result. I am thinking about, I am talking about helping out the needy people. Help those who are struggling. You can just visit the hospital and, and, and distribute the people who cannot afford to buy medicine or maybe the fruits. You can go to the orphanage, distribute the stationary items, distribute the clothes. Do it. That's how we become strong as a society. And Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma says, Even though children are provided free education, sending children to schools is not entirely free of cost. Problems upon problems. If you are running something for free of course, people would think 100 times if you are charging them in today's time, I am not exaggerating, in today's time, if you run any institution, if you are charging money from people, they would think of, okay, this is the money, maybe I can think of sending my kid or getting myself into this by paying money. But if you start running anything for free of course, they would question you multiple times. Why is that you are running free of cost? What is the purpose behind this? Have you got any bad ideas in your mind? Are you trying to do something bad? They will question you. And in this situation, Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma says, even though Babar is running his institution for free of cost, sending the kids to the school is very costly. It is a big loss. Why? Although the children are taught for free, they still have to pay for uniforms. It is a bit costly now. There are a lot of people, there are a lot of families in our country who could not even afford, who can't even afford the money for uniforms, for books. Uniforms, books, etc. That is why a lot of families cannot afford to send their children to school. Thus, instead, I told you, thus, instead of sending their kids, to the school let us produce kids and keep it to ourselves they will help us in what we do there are people like that the mentality is such that they will have a lot of kids they will have, they will go on producing three or four kids in their families and they will send one kid for daily work they will send one kid for household work they will send one kid for mechanic something they will, they will, they will go on sending their kids they don't want their sons and daughters to be educated. There are families. I am not particularly talking about one particular religion here. I am not mentioning that. In all the religions, there are parents who don't want to send their kids to get them educated. Thus, instead of going to school, most of the boys help out their families by working as mechanics, working as mechanics, day laborers, grass cutters, livestock herders, etc. One more question. So these are works done by, performed by boys. What about girls then? Whereas girls work as maid servants in the village 
where they cook, clean, wash clothes and dishes for their employers. Barbara Ali wanted to change this. That is why he took the initiative of opening his very own school. The pure soul, without much of expectation. I don't know what was going on in his mind. Even me or you, for that matter, it could be anybody who is about 25 or 30 years age now. What did we achieve? A big zero. At the age of 16, this boy, this kid is thinking about a selfless contribution to the society. And he says that he thought of coming up with his own institution, not to make profit, not to gain fame, not to gain name, in order just to educate and in order to change the daily behavior, profession, attitude of these kids, of these girls and boys, he thought of coming up with an own institution. So that is it for today's session. In my next session, I will be talking about much more on Barbara Ali School, who are the faculties, teaching faculties, and how many students were there in the school, and how many sections were there, and how many subjects the students studied, and who recruited all these students to Barbara Ali School. So we'll meet in the next session. Until then, have a good day. Take care.